I'm gonna take the video outside this morning just because it's so pretty. Plus I'm social distancing from everybody. Looking on, on your assignment board, there's gonna be a real simple little assignment today. A lot of reading, look at the paper over the USS Oklahoma, t Oklahoma history. I'm tying this in because of the USS Oklahoma and I'm gonna tie it into my family too that because of Pearl Harbor, uh, there was a lot of interesting stuff with my dad and my dad's sister and where they lived in San Francisco, etc. Today is a, a very important date in world history and as Roosevelt says, it's a date which will live in infamy and what that means is in uh, 1941, December 7th, uh, around 8 o'clock local time in Hawaii. The Japanese attacked the United States of America. Interestingly enough, Hawaii wasn't an American state at the time. They were a territory that we acquired during the Spanish-America War that we basically acquired because of the uh, strategic location of the bay and you know Pearl Harbor that way we felt like we could create a pretty powerful naval force and naval base there which we did the Japanese knew it was a very important naval base and one of the reasons we'll talk about here in just a second that they attacked Pearl Harbor uh, was was very strategic and and honestly a world-changing event so on that particular day, you have to try to figure out why the Japanese decided to attack Pearl Harbor. Although they were in negotiations almost uh, at the same time with the United States government uh, for peace. I think both sides, the Americans and the Japanese, knew that war was on its way. And the Japanese had been taking over territory in in Asia for quite a while. And one of the reasons why the Japanese needed to acquire new territories uh, before, because of natural resources. Japanese or Japan is kind of an island chain, uh, pretty much a volcanic island chain, which doesn't have a whole lot of natural resources. So one of the things that they were trying to do is to gobble up territory in order to find and uh, be able to source some natural resources, which is very important, including oil. The United States of America had created an embargo on oil sending to the United States, I'm sorry, sending to Japan, which absolutely hurt their ambitions of becoming an industrial nation. So oil was something that they were seeking. So what happens is that they attack Pearl Harbor on that morning. They attack somewhat. It was, it was actually a surprise, which sounds pretty crazy in today's military and even in 1941. But based on all records, it, it was a surprise attack they attacked with airplanes uh, only around 50 to 60 japanese were killed that day and i believe reading and trying to remember uh about uh 20 navy vessels were sunk that day including the uss oklahoma the number may be different than what i'm saying uss oklahoma and the uss arizona both of those were very significant the uss oklahoma is is something that you guys should should especially the paper that I put online make sure you read that and tie in the USS Oklahoma with with Pearl Harbor and with the um, with the variant the, the importance of this particular day and remembrance but the US Arizona uh, USS Arizona was and is probably the most significant matter of fact that's where today's memorial is located uh, is over the USS Arizona I believe on the USS Arizona well over a thousand people were killed uh, the USS uh, Arizona serves today as the location for the memorial that is is pretty interesting you can go online you could actually go online and look at that and how that actually uh, how people go to that memorial every year it's a really interesting uh, it's a really interesting the Japanese as well as Americans still come to that particular site this year I was reading it's obviously a little bit different because of the coronavirus and the pandemic that's taking place I also read that there's only a couple survivors that were in the USS Arizona that are still alive okay and, and like I said well over a thousand people died on that ship and I think uh, over 2,000 people died in the attack and like I said earlier, maybe 55 or 50 to 60 Japanese were killed on that particular day. Here's the reason why they attacked Pearl Harbor. One of the uh, strategic 
ideas was to destroy the fleet of Pearl Harbor, which would allow them more time to gobble up territory uh, in Southeast Asia. And if you destroyed the fleet at Pearl Harbor, then we wouldn't necessarily have the capabilities of going and stopping their you know, imperial ambitions, which was a, was a risk. The Japanese knew that if we were able to recover and we were able to, to gain back our uh, naval strength, then they would be in trouble. But what they thought was that if we were crippled for quite a while, then that would give them time to entrench themselves in the Pacific and in the, in the Pacific Islands. And the United States of America would decide that it was probably too dangerous and the uh, loss of human life and casualty uh, number would be too high and that the United States of America would, would decide not to attack or decide not to re, uh, react to those attacks, retaliate. But what happened was it, it rallied the United States of America and brought us into the Second World War. And if you think about it, when we entered the Second World War, history, uh, the history that we know today and the current the current uh, structure of the world today is as it was a result of the Japanese attack in Pearl Harbor. The world changed that day simply because the United States of America, who were uh, putting out an effort to stay out of the Second World War, decided that they were going to join and they declared war on the Japanese. And when they declared war on the Japanese and we entered the Second World War, the alliances and our military might started to, to flex itself, flex its muscle all over the world. The United States of America was a huge deciding factor in the Second World War, whether it be in Europe, whether it's Africa or in Asia. So the United States of America joins the war that day. You look at the you look at the assignment. I want you to look and listen to President Roosevelt's speech and his declaration of war on the Japanese. It was a very important speech to date, which will inf uh, an infamy speech. It's something that uh, everybody should listen to. President Roosevelt was a president that was elected four times. Only president to ever be elected four times. I think it was 32, 36, 40, and 44. And he died in his last term during the Second World War, which is very interesting because he wasn't the guy, he wasn't the president that ordered the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. My dad and my dad's family moved from Oklahoma uh, to San Francisco during the Second World War because of uh, their father being in the Navy. So when they moved out to California and to San Francisco, a place called Japantown, because the Japanese had been gathered up and put in internment camps as a result of Pearl Harbor, this area was vacated and they moved into a place called Japantown. My dad was uh, probably seven when that took place and my aunt was uh, 15 years old when that took place. And even to this day, my aunt has has a lot of, I don't know, a lot of frustration, a lot of anger built up toward the Japanese people. She made a comment one time that she still hates the Japanese because she lived during that time period and she was very scared when she was a young kid that the Japanese or a teenager that the Japanese were going to return, uh, were going to return while they're living there and attack and take back their home. So Aunt Patricia was very scared when she was a teenager. Now my dad was pretty young. He didn't necessarily remember it to a great extent, but Patricia being a, a young, or, you know, a teenager, absolutely remembers the experience. So today is a very interesting day. It's a date which will live in infamy, uh, infamy but it's also a date that changed the, changed the world. When the United States of America entered the Second World War in full force and we were able to rebuild our Navy and we were able to uh, regroup and attack the, the islands of the Pacific much quicker than the Japanese thought, then the United States of America started, started the change. Uh, I, it's hard to express, but the world changed on that particular day. Kind of like September 11th, Pearl Harbor was a, was a day where... Um, when they when they decided to attack America, the world changed drastically. And if you know the results and talk about ever the results of World War II, you'll understand that America is the only country that has ever dropped two atomic bombs on two Japanese cities, and it's the only time they've ever been used in warfare. Today, the weapons are way way more powerful, and 
again, it led us into the age of nuclear um, nuclear capabilities, which is a very scary time. So, do me a favor, read the article, look at the look at the or watch the video over Pearl Harbor. Stay, uh, make sure you're interested in it. It's really kind of a cool story, cool assignment. We have about a week of this distant learning left, so please make sure that you watch, listen, submit your assignment. It's a very easy 10-point assignment. I ask you guys to pay attention to this video, figure out who my aunt was, and write her name down in the text box entry, and then we'll talk to you tomorrow. From the Eagle's Nest, later.